I'm John Welchman, and I teach at the University of uh, California, San Diego, in the area of modern and contemporary art history and theory and criticism. And I've worked on Mike and uh, associated issues for about 25 or maybe a bit longer years. And we've collaborated on, um, I don't know, might be as many as 25 or even 30 different uh, catalog and essay and exhibition projects over those years. Well, clearly one of the really important things about Mike is his commitment to engaging with some of the big questions of our time. He was fearless as an artist, and he was always willing to look at his own background, to look at his experience as a Catholic kid and then as a lapsed Catholic later. He was always willing to raise um, issues about trauma, about death, about religion, about sexuality, um, gender bending, uh, about morality, about impropriety, about right, about wrong. These are you know, extraordinary range of, of major considerations. Um, and Mike, I think, numbers among the very few artists of our time who was willing to challenge himself with these big themes. Uh, he never stood back from them. And uh, issues of sexuality, of class, of religion, I think they're um, dispersed around the whole oeuvre of Mike, rather unevenly, um, but they're always there. Take religion, for example. Um, a good uh, amount of Mike's earlier work in performance didn't really address religion per se in terms of formalized ritual, the Catholic Church, priests and nuns, but it looked at the big um, questions of transcendence. Uh, it looked at the idea of standardization and ritual itself. Um, he was looking in the sublime at the category of big things, things that escape our consciousness, things that are too big to surround with language, things that you could try to draw. Wonderful image of the sublime and the sublime framed with a great paradox of how you would frame or delimit something as ineffable as the sublime. As the career developed, I mean, for example, in, in Day is Done from 2005, his wonderful video sculptural installation first seen at uh, Gagosian in New York in that year, Mike came back to religion with a vengeance. In fact, I think there were more episodes within the 32 or so um, transacted in that project that touch on religion than on any other subject. In the candle lighting ceremony, for example, where he's staging this very strange ritual candle lighting between a Catholic girl and a Jewish girl. In the audience, there is a Nazi thug performing rap music. I ride my hog, don't need a Harley. Well, she's all mine, so sorry, Charlie. And one is extraordinarily disoriented between the church-like setting and the, the thug sitting in the pews rapping. And then Mike typically crosses even all this over into a kind of meditation on body image and anorexia, as one of the girls is coded thin and the other one is coded fat, and he actually manipulates the images of both so that they, they thin down rather and fatten up in kind of rhythmic opposition. So it's it, very typical of Mike. He's raising questions about the, the very nature of evil, about the um, kind of almost meaningless and anodyne rituals that sometimes you have, like lighting a candle. What does this mean? Are we worshipping fire or the sun or light? And then overlaying that in turn with, a, with an oddball disquisition on body image. Really crazy. Each candle's lighting represents the shedding of 50 Christian pounds. He was particularly interested in childhood formations of sexuality. Uh, he has uh, passages of, of writing and reflection and some artworks that, that talk about Freudian and post-Freudian theory of pre-genital sexuality and obviously the sexualities of young children and adolescents. Um, these become merged with his own, you know, doubtlessly frustrated boyhood experiences growing up in a, in a, in a working class suburb of Detroit. Um, and they emerge in all sorts of helter-skelter ways uh, throughout the career. Um, he does a lot of pieces about anatomical and sexual difference, body parts that are matched and mismatched in various symmetrical and asymmetrical configurations. Um, he has a lot of work that deals with 
um, gender bending and gender confusion. He was very fascinated with the genre of glam rock um, that emerged um, you know, in, in, in Britain and the States in the early 1970s, um, and actually did a whole project about cross and transgendered uh, experience, uh, talking to um, some band members from, from these bands like the Coquettes, a famous one that uh, very much interested Mike. He was really interested in these ideas um, uh, throughout his career. I think the soft toy works, um, which commenced at the end of the 1980s um, and really marked uh, Mike's emergence uh, as, as a, a powerful artist in the art world, uh, this is a body of work that uh, is fraught with sexual undertones, um, partly because uh, it, it's all to do with the economies of giving. It's to do with the innocent setup narrative where the soft toys would be made, hand stitched, given to children to use, you know, for years and years as attachment items, and, and thus coded with love and affection of a purely innocent nature. And Mike, of course, was very skeptical about the whole setup of this particular economy. He found the emotion invested to be like usury, in the sense that it's been lent out and needs to be paid back. And I think this was at the heart of his thinking about the soft toy works. And it crossed with a kind of reflection about his own past as, as a child um, and the, the way that critics insisted on reading in to the soft uh, toy and Afghan works Mike's own personal biography. He responded directly to that. Um, you know, it wasn't that these were narratives of his own sexual abuse or sexual experience in any way, but critics wanted them to be like that. So he actually found strategies to make them more like that. Uh, answering this sort of uh, clamorous call for a level of content that was never there in the first place and that he didn't particularly want at the end. One of the least explored aspects of Mike's work, in my view, is his relationship to class and class consciousness and the implications of class. It's a very difficult subject and I've often seen Mike being misinterpreted on this issue, misinterpreted in that People have said that he took up, for example, with the position of the janitor, the famous photograph that appears on the cover of his first retrospective exhibition, Catholic Tastes, at the Whitney in the mid-90s. He took up with this idea of the janitor posing there with his mop and his pail and blue workers' overalls and so on. I mean, he did come from that context. His father, at least at the beginning of his career, was doing janitorial work at a local school. This was a reality. And cannot be downplayed. But Mike, of course, never, typically never had a kind of straight on approach to any of these concerns. What he is interested in is the way that social misrepresentation is organized in class terms. He is interested in the way that cliches and stereotypes and name calling and mild forms of abuse play out in different forms of social encounter. One of the longest of these is the wonderful episode in Day is Done called The Singles Mixer, uh, which is one of many places that Mike parodies the idea of the hillbilly or the southern hick. And again, it's not, I think, that he's producing a critique of that persona or that point of view. He's using the cliched positions of other people's representations to offer a commentary on the way that our class orientations are sedimented in the United States. You like to put on dark airs and dress all devilish, but you ain't shit. You're a pretty boy with his tongue hanging out of his mouth like a hound. Ain't nothing compared to that which is without form. In nothingness, he's gonna have nothing to lick. He's gonna have nothing to kiss up to. You slut! <laughs> uh, Mike was very interested in Rudolf Steiner's ideas of the Gesamt Kunstwerk, the total work of art, as it translates into English, a, a project that he um, put into operation, if you like, at his Goetheanium. Uh, in 1913. And the Gesamtkunstwerk is really um, a constellation of ideas 
perhaps epitomized at one point by Steiner, in which the artwork is not conceived as simply as a drawing or a painting or a unitary object, but as a constellation or ensemble of different forms of often synesthetically connected projects, ricocheting across each other. Um, eventually, this might Im include the architectural envelope itself. It, it might include works that appear on walls or in sculptural form. It might um, include light or other forms of projection. Um, it can include almost anything. And you can see Mike um, experimenting and nodding towards this idea of the total work of art throughout the career beginning in the 90s. But again, I think it comes to a form of conclusion in Day is Done, because in Day is Done, you've got video uh, in different uh, organizations, sometimes three video screens, sometimes one. You've got sculptures. Um, and, and, and sculptural installation platform. You've got a, a musical. Don't forget that Day is Done is actually a musical with you know, dozens of different, of different kinds of, 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 of musical extravaganza from pop and gospel to rock and blues. Um, you've got all that going on. It's all confected in this giant kaleidoscope of total art form.